Hey everyone, how's it going? Dave here, back in the garage, and it is time, as always, to pull some orders. We sold a bunch of stuff on eBay. I think I even sold something over on Mercari. Was it Mercari or Posh? Well, on some alternative platform. Might have been Poshmark that I sold something. I think it was. I pulled this keyboard out of my storage unit when I was there the other day, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna list this. But then when I got home, I, I was like, oh, this is actually nice because it's got a little lift to it. Maybe I'll use it for this computer and sell the other one, but this one actually has issues. Some of the buttons I'm pushing are not working, so I'm glad I didn't sell it because I probably would have gotten a complaint. Yeah, <laughs> definitely gonna have to put the other keyboard back in because I can't even type eBay. This one's gonna have to get, get gone. But yeah, I actually have quite a few sales that came through. And the first off is a calendar. I'm just getting a look at it. And I think those are at the bottom of this tote here, so they might be kind of a pain to to get, but we'll get it. Yeah, it's early in the morning. I'm still kind of waking up. I'm in the wake up phase of the day. Yeah, this isn't the best. I do have to pull all these out to get to it, but that's all right. Okay, so I spent a lot of time yesterday trying to really like focus in on the death pile. It's getting to that point where it's, it's really tough to motivate myself. There's a reason the items that were on this uh, shelf were sitting here for so long. It's because I wasn't motivated or excited about them. And when you force yourself, like I'm doing, to go through and list all the stuff you've not wanted to list, it's a it's a challenge. This is what sold. A rigid calendar, 1993 to 1994. $11.99 plus shipping over on eBay. I got a big, huge lot of those for like 20 bucks uh, not too long ago. I already sold a few, so it's pure profit at this point. So this is where we're at. Like, we're down to the very bottom of it. This, I feel like, might be listed. I need to look it up. This is just power cord. This is from our house. It's some old teapots and stuff I got in Japan and China. I don't even know if they're worth anything, but I figured I'd look them up before I donated them. These are books. I want to do like a whatnot book auction, but I don't have enough here. So I think I'm going to bring them over to the shipping container next time I go to get more inventory and put them with my other books. So eventually when it cools down, I'll just do a bunch of book auctions and sell those off. This is actually supposed to go in my attic because it's personal. I'm keeping it. It's Mickey and Minnie kissing. It's like Christmas decoration. I could sell it, but it'd be hard to ship and it only sells for like 40 bucks. I'd rather just keep it. Uh, we got some jewelry, which meh, meh. I hate jewelry. <laughs> this is pretty much empty. Just another book in it. Uh, this is just, that's a personal thing that Callie wants me to put on eBay. And then you come over here. This is again, it's just like, it's like nothing. It's like junk drawer stuff, a lot of this. A couple action figures for a future action figure auction. Some clothing my mom gave me to sell, which I'm never gonna list. Sell it in a bundle on whatnot or something. And I got some vacuum parts, which I have to figure out what vacuums they're for. That was the dilemma with those. And then a hat, I mean, there's nothing left. There's, okay, so this is the ephemera I have left. And that's my CDs and uh, cassettes which I'm going to run through a dibbed auction here in a couple days. So the ephemera, we can talk about that first, the, you know, paper goods. I sold four more Oh snaps. Look at that. And I took off the sale I had where if you buy four, you save 15%. I turned that off and I still sold four of them, which means I'm glad I turned it off because I made an extra $15, 107 instead of like 90 or whatever, uh, on these four Oh snaps in one box. So that's cool. So 26 99 a piece on those. Okay, I sold a Sony STR DE445. That's one of these receivers from that uh, DE445. Is it this one? No, 130. I'll find it and I'll show it to you. I generally don't pull these while I'm recording. It's too hard to do. Actually, I think I know I sold this over here. Sold this one, this Sony receiver. I also sold this Harman Kardon one under it. So both of those are going to be gone, which is going to clear up a nice little bit of space. The Sony one sold for $44.99 plus shipping, and the Harman Kardon sold for $75 plus shipping. So I'm glad to see them go. Actually, I've not been getting as many returns or complaints about those as I thought I might. I did test them all, but still, when you ship them, you know, they can break, things can go wrong, and it's nice to see those sell and be working when they get to where they're going. So hey, $115 in AV equipment, can't beat that. Okay, so like I said, with that stuff, Books are going to the container. The glass stuff I need to just look through. It's personal. It might get donated because Tina doesn't want it. The ephemera, that's what I was talking about. It took me a minute to get back to where I was. The ephemera, I went through, I spent like an hour yesterday really digging into it because I tried to just run an auction where I sold it in bulk lots and I was not getting any bids. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to really go through it and only save the top tier stuff, stuff I know I can do good with. And I probably recycled 80% of it. Probably 80% of it got recycled and 20% got kept. Now, I'm a little torn. Like, I might actually try to just list it on eBay. 
uh, because now I know I've got all the best stuff. <laughs> you know, you, you do the auction where you sell it in bulk lots and let people pick and choose the lots and pull out the good stuff. But now that I have all the best stuff, I might just put it on eBay or I'll just run it in some in some lots on, on whatnot or dibbed it or whatever. Do I even want to try to dig for golf clubs? I don't. Uh, I'll pull them before the, the video ends because uh, I did sell some, but we'll talk, talk about them all together at the end of this. So, you know, <laughs> keep you golfers at the edge of your seat. We're gonna get to that in a little bit. So the ephemera I got rid of most of, only kept the best of the best. I sold this old timer knife. I went through and listed a bunch of knives. I found a whole tote full of them at the container. And I think I got like 10 listings out of that, so that was good. Sold this for $16.24 plus shipping. It's this right here, $16.24 plus ship on that. But I mean, honestly, at this point, there's like nothing left here. I, I can do those few things today. Uh, the ephemera, I don't know, maybe. But I think I'll run the CD auction, CD slash cassette auction in a few days. So that'll be gone. Books will go back to the container. Glass, I'll look through it and either recycle it or donate it or list it. And then I'll look through the vacuum parts today. That should be another one of my goals. Those clothes, I'll probably just put them in a bin for my future whenever auction of clothing because I'm not going to list them. So they'll be in some future clothing auction. So I'm going to be pretty much down to nothing in here if I really dedicate an hour or two to it today. Over here, I have a couple auctions I'm prepping. This is like a Disney auction. I literally went into my inventory and took out all the Disney stuff and set it aside, like listed on eBay. It was all already listed. I literally delisted it because I wanted to get some more space and a lot of it was plushies and I cleared some room for plushies. It's not as bad. There's still a ton of plushies, but at least with all the Disney stuff gone, I have a little more space to store plushies and find them and it's not gonna be as much of a hassle. I'll probably run this Universal stuff that I'm not gonna keep. Whatever Universal stuff, I need to go through. Whatever Universal Studio stuff I'm not gonna keep, I'm gonna run in an auction on Dibdit in a couple days. Uh, this'll all probably be over by the time this video goes live. So sorry if you missed these auctions, if you were interested, you know, if you follow me on those platforms, you can catch them when they happen. But yeah, that's, that's the plan is those two things are auctions, the cassettes are auctions, and then I'm gonna have a lot of space cleared up. And then at that point, I mean, I'm not done. I gotta go back to the container and get more stuff. Now I'm not gonna get a ton. I'm gonna keep getting like a reasonable amount, something I feel like I can list moderately quickly so I don't overwhelm myself in here again. And I don't really expect to get through my whole container before my sourcing halt ends. Uh, I've only got another like week or two before my vacation starts. Probably two weeks before my vacation starts. I sold these little cleats. These are clam cleats for, for sailboats. It's something you use for sailboats. I don't really understand what they do, but it's a set of two, sold them for 12, 14 plus shipping. So six bucks a piece, uh, nothing super exciting, but you know, they sold. But I went and I did the math today. And if I wanna keep listing 10 a day, every day that I'm traveling on vacation, I need to have 150 drafts by the day I leave. Cause I'm gonna be gone for 15 days. And right now I have 130 drafts and I'm gonna publish 10 today. So that means I need to continue to draft at least 10 a day. And then on top of the drafting 10 a day, a couple days I need to draft like 15 or 20 to get my bank up to 150 so that I can have listings for every day I'm gone. So it's gonna be a challenge. It means I need to find, well, how many days until I go on vacation? It's like, yeah, I mean, I need to find like 150 more things to list out of that container. I should be able to. This big bear sold. That's why maybe listing that ephemera individually would be a smart move because there's probably 50 pieces in there alone. Uh, that big artist bear, it doesn't have a name or a brand on it. Wasn't even sure if it was mohair. I don't think it is. I think it's synthetic. Uh, so I just listed it randomly for 25 bucks and it sold. It is jointed. It's big. Uh, so, you know, 25 bucks plus shipping on that. Not too bad. But yeah, I think that might be a challenge, finding 150 more items to list, but not really. Not really. I, I, I think today is a Sunday. So tomorrow on a Monday, I'll probably, hmm, maybe in the morning head over to the container, the shipping container, and see if I can't find another... Did I put this in a bin? It says it's right over here. Uh, hopefully I can find another, you know, 100, 150 items to list. I may not grab it all tomorrow, but, you know, grab a good portion of it to get it back here and get started working on that. And honestly, the way I like to do things, maybe I should just say, you know what, I'm going to spend the next two, three days getting it all done so I don't have to stress about it anymore. There's a temptation to do that. The only issue is, I don't know if you knew about this. I know some of you knew about it because you told me, uh, you can only have 250 drafts. Once you get to 250 drafts, 
any new draft you make starts deleting an old draft. So I don't want to get past 250. So I can't get it all done right away. Uh, is this what sold? Yeah. Department 56, double street lamp, set of four. Pre-owned, sold that over on eBay for 12 bucks. A lot of low dollar sales. A lot of low dollar sales. And basically what happens, I try not to list anything for under 15. Most of you know that. Uh, but as time goes on, sales happen, promos happen, and stuff gets below 15. And sometimes I get 10, $12 sales. $8 sales if it's really been on the store for a long time. Uh, so it does happen. I try to minimize it, but, you know, it's not perfect. I have a customer saying that buying from me has been a disaster on eBay. And so I've been trying to figure out how to deal with that. I'll tell you kind of the story, but this sold. This is a set of Snap-on screwdrivers. Got that from my cousin's husband in our trade. Sold it for $72 plus shipping. It's seven vintage Snap-on screwdrivers with the smooth black handle. It's a little more rare to find a Snap-on with a black handle. Usually it's like red and black, but these are the old black handle ones. And they are desirable. Some people like only want those screwdrivers. So $71 for the set. And uh, that's pure profit at this point. All my tool stuff. Well, the majority of my tool stuff is pure profit. Oh boy, how am I gonna get to this train? I think I have to delist this. Really cool hat, signed by a bunch of famous golf people. I'm gonna put it on my desk over here so I can remember to delist it. It was in really nice shape when I bought it, but something happened. I had it in a box right over here, right over here, uh, either in this row, probably this row. So basically in this spot. And we had like a, a little bit of a light drought this, this uh, spring. We weren't getting rain for like months upon months. And the grass and the bushes started dying. And so we started watering the plants out there. And when we watered the plants, it actually got through the window. Like when we had that storm, it was dripping down into one of the totes here. And it was the one with those hats. And that hat got really water damaged. I dried it out. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's going to recover. It's not reshaping or anything, so it's probably just going to, I don't know, go and whatnot for two bucks or something. Because I think, I think she's dead, Jim. So this train sold over on eBay. It took a while. Got a lot of questions about it that I didn't know the answers to. Uh, but I did sell it. Lionel uh, Military Marine Switcher Locomotive. Sold that for $80 over on eBay to a viewer named Rose. Thank you, Rose. Rose showed me quite a bit of support and bought a handful of items, which I really appreciate. And one of the things she bought is over here. It's this glass lantern type thing. Oh, it's kind of stuck behind a few things. Let me see if I can grab it. It reminds me of, uh, what's his name? Scrooge? Or, no, not Scrooge. That's the duck. But Scrooge did play the part in the uh, Christmas Carol, where he's like holding this little lantern to see like the ghosts and stuff. And it's all old fashioned. And this is like the little globe for it. So it sits like this and it could be like, I don't know, it's a very cool little antique candle piece. There's some wax on it. I put that and disclosed that in the listing. But that sold for 15 bucks plus shipping as well. And speaking of selling glass, I did sell. Oh, I need to tell you the story about the guy who said uh, it's been like a nightmare or whatever he said. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's what happened. This is a little Mayflower ship in a bottle. It's like glass, hand-blown glass with a glass ship in it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I paid that a dollar for it and sold it for 15 plus shipping. Okay, so this is what happens. I send out this pipe fitter set. So pipe fitter as in like a sprinkler fitting, plumbing, that sort of thing. And it's a set of dies, which are like these big things that help you thread stuff. I don't know a lot about this. All I know is I found it at the flea market. My brother told me to buy it because that's his career and I bought it and I thought I had made some profit, but now it's turned around into something much worse <laughs> where this guy is very mad at me. And, uh, Basically, I was having trouble shipping it because one of the pieces is this like 32 inch pipe and then it's got a bunch of heavy little dies. They're like probably five pounds, six pounds, maybe even seven pounds each. They're like this size. And I'm like, man, this is like, I can't find a box that'll fit it without it costing a fortune because if I use like stack 12 by 12 by 12s, it's going to be really expensive. And so I was really struggling to figure out how to ship it. I finally ended up shipping it in a golf box. And I thought that would work fine. Everything fit in there good. I wrapped it all up with bubble wrap, things like that. Each piece with bubble wrap. Put it in the uh, put it in the box and packed it up and shipped it. Well, he messages me. I sold this. This is part of my vacuum stuff. I sold that $40 hose yesterday. It's four little accessories for a Filter Queen Triple Crown vacuum cleaner. Uh, and that I got, I actually just edited the footage. It was... It was one of my most recent purchases. I paid $20 for the vacuum with all the accessories. 
And I already sold the hose and this from it. The hose sold for 40 and then this sold for 50 So 110 I paid 20 So nice profit on that vacuum so far. And it's a set of four accessories. I just don't want to pull them all out. So the guy messages me and he says, Hey, I got the package. Three of the pieces are missing. And he sends a picture of the box uh, with like tape over the top saying there was only tape on the top, no cardboard, meaning that somehow the cardboard like ripped off the top. Maybe UPS then resealed it with tape if he's telling the truth, which I think he probably is. I do think he probably is telling the truth. Uh, but yeah, that's not great. And I was like, oh, dang it. Okay. Let me reach out to UPS and see about filing a claim, which I don't even know if UPS will cover stuff ground. Like, is there any built-in insurance for ground? There might not be. Let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, so I said I'd reach out. I go to UPS and it says like, it says I can't submit a claim. Something about the wanting me to log in, but I don't have a UPS login. So I don't really know. Well, not linked as far as I can tell. I mean, I created a login years ago to get some free bubble mailer or free uh, labels. It's not something I've ever used for anything. So I don't have a login. So I try to create a new account and won't let me do it because it's not the right account. And I'm sitting there thinking like maybe it's I need to be logged into like eBay's account because they're the official shippers or something. But I don't know if you guys know anything about that. It would not let me file a claim. So I told him, I said, hey, can you try to file the claim? Because it's not letting me. And he writes back and he gets the same exact message. And I said, okay, that's the message I got too. And, uh, you know, that's really weird. But then he messages back and I said, okay, I'll probably, I'll call him a little bit later today. Cause I was out and I was like, I'll call him a little bit later today and see if I can figure this out. And so before I even call him, he sends another message really angry. And he says, hey, the blah, blah, blah doesn't fit the blah, blah, blah. Now, I know very little about this stuff. I just, I bundled it the way my brother told me to bundle it. Uh, but he wasn't here, so he didn't like deeply look in. I'm trying to find a book, guys. Sorry for the camera angle. Uh, so he doesn't know exactly what I have. He's just going off what he can see from the pictures I'm sending him. And so it sounds like maybe I've bundled them wrong. And and but but this guy, he goes to this like high level of anger where he's like, "This has turned into a real nightmare buying from you. You need to fix it immediately." Uh, because this thing, this one piece doesn't fit in this other piece, basically. And I'm like, "Uh, crap." And of course, it's like the idea of my my sale turning into a nightmare, my instant gut reaction. And I want to know I'm talking to a bunch of sellers, a bunch of sellers who are like looking out for their families, paying their bills, trying to do uh, the best for their customer while also retaining, you know, their revenue and all that stuff. And I don't know. Here was the internal struggle. And I want to know your thoughts. Why can't I find this book? It's very weird. My gut reaction and what I would have done in the past, and honestly, some of you guys in your comments have gotten me to stop reacting so quickly to this thing, because in the past I've reacted super quickly and it's ended up being a bad thing. And so my gut reaction in the past has been just refund them, refund them fully, take the loss, move on with your life. But that's not always the best solution. There's, there's a chance he's not being honest. It could be the right piece. I called my brother. He said it should be the right piece. He doesn't really understand. My brother also said if he's any sort of like pipe fitter, the thing he's complaining about is easily fixed with a threading machine, which he should have. And so he's he said, my brother's like, I'm pretty sure he just is like mad at this point and wants a full refund because it didn't come with all the die heads. Because I, you know, me and my brother came to the conclusion, it probably really got messed up in shipping. One of them probably punched through the cardboard and then the guys lost a few pieces and had to like reseal it. I, I get that, that's fine. That's probably what happened. But he's annoyed by it and he's finding what is technically, my brother says, a very small thing that any pipe fitter could fix very easily um, and turning it into something big because he just wants a full refund and he doesn't want to do like a UPS case because I said, you know, I'll talk to UPS. They might want some pictures. The guy doesn't want to deal with that stuff. So he just wants a full refund and he wants to go on with his life. I can't find this book. Hold on. Yeah, it's one of those things. Every now and then I need to give it my full attention to find something. This was sold. Secret Naidan Techniques of Harokuku <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu. Sold that book for $40 plus free shipping over on eBay. That's kind of the conclusion my brother and I come to. This guy is just annoyed. And I get it. it. It is annoying. And, you know, the fact that there's this one other minor thing that's an issue kind of pushed him over the edge. And so he sent an angry message. And so this is how I responded, which is going to trigger some people. But I'm just going to tell you the truth. Uh, I sold this uh, Technics AV receiver M218. It's not even an AV receiver. It's some sort of tape deck type thing. Dolby or cassette deck Dolby system model sold for $40 plus shipping. So what I told him, I said, listen, man, I know this has been not great, not a great experience. I'm really sorry about all the trouble. At this point, it's probably best to just set up a return for refund in the order, deta in the order details. 
uh, eBay will auto generate a label, ship it back to me and I'll give you a complete refund. Okay. And, uh, is that the best solution? I don't know. I'm not going to get back all the items. I'm not going to get back all the money I invested into it. I'm going to lose money, right? But at the same time, I don't really want to refund him and give him all the parts for free when I know like he's kind of, you know, just trying to fish for some free stuff at this point because he's mad at me. Uh, so I decided to send him that. Uh, oh, look at this. This is right in the top. I sold the golf club. Titleist, but I don't know. Would you have just given him a full refund at that point? <sighs> Ideally, the correct thing to do would be to get UPS to cover it because they damaged the box and they lost some of the pieces. But I just don't have high hopes for that. And I guess they probably count on me not having high hopes for that and doing nothing in regards to that because that that benefits them. All right, I sold this golf club. This is a Titleist, 9.5 degree. I don't know. Is that a wood? Or a driver? I don't know. Sold it for $17. And free shipping on that. So, eh, $10 maybe. If I'm lucky, I get 10 bucks out of that sale. So yeah, let me know. What would you have done? Would you have just given the full refund? Or would you make him work for... Basically, I'm making him work for the refund. <laughs> I'm still losing. I'm actually losing a little more because I've got to now uh, pay for the shipping label to get it back to me. So I'm basically losing more than I originally would have lost if I just refunded him. But I can resell some of the pieces that come back. You know, and probably recoup, I don't know, half the money again. I don't know. It's probably not worth it. I just, I also feel like you got to kind of put these, like, these non-negotiable, like, this is how I'm going to do the business in place. And that will help you make these decisions. That's something I've decided to do. So I'm kind of just sticking with it. TaylorMade. I sold the TaylorMade. Uh, Strong 3. Here it is. I'm actually finding these pretty fast. This is the next golf club. It sold. I did sell some on Posh too. I don't think I sold anything on Mercari. That sold for twenty five ninety nine. Free shipping. Ugh, I don't know, at least I'm working through all these free shipping clubs. I thought I've got to be getting close to running out of free shipping clubs at this point. One thing I will say is I do like that I get to stand up and pull these, and I don't have to like be on my knees looking at the ground. Uh, Turbo Power Steel Plus Wood Three. That's not even like I don't even think that's got a brand on it, but it still sold fourteen twenty nine. Free shipping. <laughs> I'm basically losing money on it. Uh, no, I'll probably break even. At least it's gone, though. And then this is like, this is a part of the show where I donate golf clubs. <laughs> Ping Zing 2 Sand Wedge, 52 inch sold. $21 plus shipping on that one. Hey, a profitable club. Look at that. I mean, not great. But hey, it cleared four clubs out. So I'm happy. I'm happy. And I've already got the materials. They're easy to ship. It's fine. I'm not complaining. I'll take the sales. It's good for my stores. Uh, what do they call that? Turnover. You know, it keeps the store healthy if you're selling a lot. So it's, you know, activity, all that sort of thing. But either way, I don't think that buyer will be happy at my solution. I think he would have wanted a refund or a partial refund. But I offered a full refund if he sends it back. I don't think he will want to do the work. I think that will just, like, make this nightmare even a bigger nightmare. He will probably give me negative feedback once he gets his refund. And I will let you know if he does. I sold this Naruto backpack. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. Got this at like Flea Across Florida or something for... Well, I think I was with my mom. So maybe not. I don't know where I got this. I think I paid $5 for that. I sold it on Posh for $15 plus shipping. He wrote back. I'm like a little scared to look at what he wrote. I haven't, I haven't looked at his messages since I told him to just do a, a full refund and sorry for the mess ups. Uh, but I bet you, I bet you his message is going to be upset. And I've talked about this before. I kind of have like a fear of these like super angry messages. So I avoid looking at them. But for the sake of you guys, despite the mental or emotional pain it may cause me, I'm going to look at this message after I put this stuff back and uh, see what he said. Oh, okay. See, I always worry and it's nothing. He said, okay, I will return it. Thank you. It was nothing. I was very scared of this message for the last several hours. And he just said, okay, I will return it. Thank you. So worried about nothing. Eh, typical Dave. That's a life of someone with anxiety. You worry about something for ages and it's it amounts to nada. All right, let me head over to the platform where nothing ever sells. Mercari, maybe I sold something. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, you never know. Seller dashboard, active, in progress. Yes, something sold. Rate your buyer, yes, I sold something. Look at that, guys. 
I did it. We did it, Mercari. We sold something. It is a kiss. Oh, the mystery from the last episode. The mystery of the golf club. Remember, if you watch the last one, and you should watch every episode, guys. And if you don't, you should go back and watch them. Any you miss, you know. <laughs> Just go back, watch them. You know, you don't want to miss a single thing. Every moment is an exciting, exciting turn of events here in the garage. Ah, uh, the gurge. So in the last episode, I had a sale on Mercari. Two in a row. Hey, Vendu guys. Crossless with Vendu. Actually, they messaged me again. They want me to promote their uh, their yearly plan. I can tell you about that in a second. Okay, so here's what happened. I sold a golf club. I said, I don't, I feel like I just shipped this. Maybe I pulled the Mercari order and shipped it and forgot to mark it as shipped, but I couldn't find any evidence of like a label or anything like that. So, eh, a little concerned. Turns out the reason I felt like I had just shipped it is because it had sold two days prior on eBay and it did not cross the D-list because of that whole, I had a little hiccup like a month ago where I delisted and relisted and didn't do it properly through Vendu. I did it on the eBay app. So I've got like two or 300 items that are disconnected and they're not cross-listing and delisting or unlisting and relisting based on what I do in Vendu. I screwed it up basically. And I haven't fixed it yet because that's typical for Dave. So it sold on eBay. I ship it and then it sells the next day on Mercari. So I end up having to cancel the Mercari order. I haven't gotten a message from Mercari yet yelling at me or banning me, which is a good thing. But this was sold. Kiss, Peter, Chris, little action figure type thing. Now I wonder if I can see how much they actually spent. Because it sold for $18.90. Buyer paid $18.90 plus a $151 service fee plus $13 in uh, shipping and then $1.53 to process and then $1.92 in tax. So what did they pay total for that? It, they paid like $37 for the $19 item. I mean, that's not actually as bad as I thought it might be. I, I was expecting worse. So the Vendu annual plans, I, sh I wanted to tell you about those. They are a good deal. If you're looking to sign up for Vendu, Vendu is a great way to cross list your items onto different platforms. I use it. And when I use it well, I sell well on other platforms. When I don't do anything for a month, I don't sell as much. I need to get in there or get Mikey back over here. I've been telling Anna she could do it for me to save up money for her dog she wants to get. Uh, but she's not been doing it. Typical teenagers, right? But maybe I get Mikey come back over here and cross list for a day. That would help me. Uh, but basically, the annual plans, you get two months free. You get access to all the... I'm reading this. All the Vendu features, including automatic sale detection, bulk delisting and relisting, bulk importing inventory to your marketplace, and all add-ons included. Priority access to update and updates and improvements and uninterrupted cross listing without having to deal with monthly billing hassles. Buy a year to save and you get free two months so yeah that's the vendu yearly plans if you want to check those out i'll put the link down below uh definitely a good deal if you know you're going to stick with it to sign up for those okay so let me see how much i sold over on so it's 18 dollars 1890 in sales on uh, mercari 15 on posh nothing amazing but still something i mean just those two sales would pay for vendu for a month so there's that and then $949.44 with 21 sales on eBay. So lots of shipping to do today. Got to prep for these auctions. Got to get the final little bits of death pile out of here so that I'm fully listed. And man, it's weird. It's weird to finally be near the end of the death pile. It's been a slog. It's been a long road, but I'm happy to see some progress. If you are too, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.